Am I supposed to face you guys or face? Uh, okay. Thank you. Well, thank you for. This is the first time I've ever been in here. I was born and raised here. Um, I know a few of you guys. I know, of course, Terry. I know uh, Terry here. Um, thank you for having me. I'm, Mr. Sumner has uh, been very gracious to give me his time. What I basically offer. Did you state your name? I'm sorry. James Walker's name. James. James Walker. James Walker. 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 Yes, sir. Yeah, I know um, you. probably remember my, my <laughs> dad. Yeah. Wait, right. Um, what I offer is basically fuel um, versus diesel or gasoline uh, at, I think it's $354 a gallon. Okay, we offer you uh, fuel for about $1.75 a gallon. Um, it's Bible. The feds are giving uh, rebates. They are giving grants. And we, we, we want to be your vehicle to get to where you want to be to save money. I did a general, um, uh, I would need numbers to give you specific savings, but I did a general chart savings. Uh, I think I was talking to Mr. Davis at one of the fuel budgets. It might have been the entire fuel budget for Hay Howard for last year was about $54,000 or something in that neighborhood. Um, basically, to, to give you an idea of how much we can save you, you would be you'd be looking at uh, about 40% of that. Um, and that's including, you're going to need costs to uh, convert the vehicles and things like that. So if you spent 54000 if your vehicles were converted and you had all the equipment on hand, your cost could be about 25000 26000 Because we can guarantee you fuel at about $1.70. We can guarantee you fuel at about $1.75 a gallon, and the feds give us a, a, a rebate on that as well. We give a quarter back to the city for every gallon that sells. If you open that fuel fueling facility to the public, um, which means, of course, if you're paying $1.75 a gallon for fuel, and I'm going to give you every quarter, every three months, every quarter of the year, I'm going to give you another quarter back. So you'll be paying $1.50 a gallon for gas. You can add up the savings really fast on that. The maintenance costs go down way, way down. You know, as far as changing your oil, you're gonna change your oil quite often for seating vehicles, probably. Me, I change mine every three months. You're gonna probably do it, I don't know, monthly or every couple of months. Once you use natural gas to fuel your vehicles, your oil changes will last almost the entire life of the vehicle. The entire life of the vehicle. Because there's no additives in natural gas ever. There's no sulfur. There's no added nitrogen. There's no added lead. There's no added carcinogens at all. So uh, what we have to offer also some information I gave to uh, Mr. Sumner today. This conversation is about two days long, and I have to condense it into a few minutes because you guys don't have all the time you know, uh, in the world to do this. I do thank you for your time, but um, there's a lot more that goes into it. Basically, if you decide to want more information, we will be back on Thursday to bring a vehicle that runs off natural gas as well as gasoline. So what you will see on Thursday is a vehicle that has just a simple button. We'll show you the whole layout, the tank, the conversion, the computer, and I don't know how much you guys are in the cars. Uh, I know Terry's in the cars pretty good, or Chief. Um, but basically, and I'll explain it to you, the way this works, this computer ties into your car computer. The more advanced the car, the better it works because it feeds off signals off the existing computer. Those signals will be in your, your tag sensor, or excuse me, your tag wire, your throttle position sensor, and your O2 sensor. All newer cars are gonna have those. As your throttle goes up, it goes up and down. As your O2 sensor reads more or less gas, it puts out more or less gas. You don't void any factory warranties at all. <coughs> the gas enters the engine by way of just behind your air cleaner, between the air cleaner and your uh, your plenum or your intake. There's no holes cut in the vehicle. There's no warranties void at all. Terry probably gonna jump up and down when I say, or chief when I say this, it's 130 octane. Pump gas is about 90 octane on the good stuff. Maybe 93 if you get Chevron. What that, think of it as dishwashing liquid, the strongest you can buy. 
It cleans your pistons. It cleans your heads. It cleans everything. Your cat, your exhaust, everything. It's win, win, win. Besides the feds are given tons of grants, tons of rebates. We even help you with that if you want help or if you need help. It's a win win. The shortfall, the downfall to this is initial cost. Okay, initial cost. You'd have to convert a vehicle at a cost of about $6,000 per vehicle. Doesn't matter whether it's a V8, four cylinder. The only limit or extra charge would be if, say, if you get a garbage truck and you had to add multiple tanks. Because your tanks come as big as 20 gallons. And so if you need 40 gallons, of course, that's two tanks. The price would go up a little bit there. But, um, it's a, it's a win-win. Tallahassee has done it for the school buses. They got a federal grant of about $5 million. Uh, Jacksonville City buses, Atlanta MARTA buses, Dallas Police Department, Houston Police Department, Fort Walton Beach. Uh, we're working with Union County, Florida, Union Springs, uh, Crestview. All these cities are in the works to do this. And there's tons of proof on the internet if you want to go on YouTube to like CNG. Plus natural gas, anything on YouTube that you'll see. Uh, they show you crash test, safety videos, uh, tons of things. But basically, if you decide you, uh, to want further information, this is a very lengthy conversation. And again, I thank you for your time. I won't take too much time. If there's any questions, I'd like to answer those. Um, Mr. Walker, talk about distribution as far as purchasing, um, the, the necessity of a station in town versus not, yes. and, and you know, getting a supply. That's the most beautiful thing. Supply is just this. Any gas line, like a home gas line, goes to your house that you cook with natural gas for your stove, it's the same gas line. We run slightly bigger. Maybe your home might have a one-inch gas line. We run a two-inch gas line to this. It goes to the standard meter. Uh, it runs to our compressor. Now, as far as storage, nothing goes underground. That's the beauty. You don't have to dig up a single piece of concrete. It's natural, it's non-toxic, it sits on top of the mountain. The pressurized storage, you have small pictures of, I've, I've given Mr. John Gurley and Mr. Sumner, um, of the storage tanks, <clears throat> but nothing goes on the ground. Um, so as far as delivering distribution, it's delivered as needed. We only store about 200 gallons on hand, and that's so that when you come to pressurize your tank, you're gonna have, say, average is a 10 gallon tank, you can fill this 10 gallon tank in about 30 seconds. So the manpower, as far as fueling, waiting, you don't have time to smoke a cigarette. Well, you would smoke a cigarette around this anyways. But um, it's quick. It's quicker than gasoline. It's just a pressure differential. If you pop a car tire, how long does it take for that air to leave out a car tire? That's as long as it takes to fill your tank. It's all airlock. It's oxygen depleted. So let's say you're filling your tank. Let's say you did smoke a cigarette, and you drop the cigarette right on the nozzle. There's no oxygen in that system it would not explode. Let's say you took, somebody had a forklift and actually crushed the tank. And there's a burst disc at the back of every tank on the opposite end of the nozzle. It pops out, it bleeds into the air. You breathe it, it's not toxic. It floats. You smell like sulfur or rotten eggs. There's no sulfur in it, but it smells like sulfur. That chemical is called mercaptan, and we added one part per million just so you know the natural gas is there. So it's very it's safer than gasoline. The flash point of it is 600 degrees. Gasoline has a flash point of about 296 degrees. So it's exactly, almost exactly twice as safe as gasoline. So it's good stuff. And as far as supply, back to supply, you don't have to store anything. Um, one big thing, I, I, I talked to Mr. CH at the Citizens Bank today, because we offer one more thing that it knocks down your initial cost. Say you decide you want natural gas, you say, well, we don't have 200 grand to put it for a station. Talk to Mr. CH, and the only thing it requires of you guys is a commitment to say, okay, we're gonna buy X amount of gallons per month. So I foot the loan for the bill, I own the station, we agree on a price of X amount of gallons per month or more, the station gets put up on your property, and no, the station belongs to me, but it costs you nothing. I do the maintenance every month, I take your electric bill. All you do is you swipe your card and buy gas every month. That's it. So, like if you had Springs, the cost of their station was uh, was nine hundred thousand bucks. But they have to foot that cost because they want to buy their station. You know, and every time if you open the station to the public, 
I don't know if I gave Mr. Summer the paperwork earlier, but I'll give you the federal mandate that the uh, station builder gets a 50 cent per gallon rebate, and we agree to give you half. So another 25 cents. So if you want to calculate your fuel cost, we sell to you for $1.75 minus 25 cents that we're going to give you back. So it's $1.50 a gallon. So you can add the savings up very fast. Very fast. Mr. Walker is going to give me some handouts. Um, and the uh, one on e from EPA that announces final rulemaking for clean alternative fuel, I have enough copies of that. The color ones I got late this afternoon. And if there are any that, that y'all would like um, copies of, we can find it on the internet or find a way to, to make them color copies. So um, I, I just have one of them, though, so I just wanted to, to make that point. And also, uh, we'll be back. We, we would like to come back on Thursday to show you the actual natural gas vehicle. And they're called biofuel vehicles because you run off gasoline or natural gas. If you're out in the woods on the Old Smith Road where we used to live and your natural gas runs out, while you're driving, automatically, it switches back to gasoline. There's no nothing needed, no buttons to push. A little red light comes on and says, you're out of natural gas. That's all that happens. But you'll get to see this vehicle on Thursday. Um, and it just continues to run off gasoline. Whenever you get to where you can fill up, you fill back up, you keep going. If you're going out of town, you can type in CNG locator, and it pops up on any GPS for every natural gas station in the United States. So it's, it's, it's pretty good stuff. What is the mileage? The mileage is 10% plus or minus. And we say 10% plus or minus because if you drive like me, I only put one set of tires on my car in 10 years. I made it. It's 10% better. If you goose it and you want to drive like a race car driver, then it's going to be a little bit less. So the answer is about it's based on the EPA standard of the vehicle. Basically, 10, 10 gallons of natural gas, what they call a GGE, gasoline gallon equivalent, is the same as gasoline. Same mileage on the vehicle. The yes. EPA states on the yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. If the EPA says 31 mpgs on gasoline, you're going to get 31 mpgs on natural gas. The difference is you're going to pay a dollar fifty a gallon instead of three, whatever it is. Um, you said. Most of the vehicles are on the 